One of the outstanding problems of understanding the uh, sun is why the outer layers of the sun, what is called the corona, is so hot as it is observed to be and how what happens on the corona and the sun affects the earth through various things happening in the interplanetary medium. Now, we have with us today Dr. Rainer Schwen of the Max Planck Institute for Aeronomy in Lindau, Germany. Basically, I'd like to ask you what you think is our current state of understanding of this field. Yeah, the main problem in all our business is what you already mentioned. That's the fact that we simply do not know how the corona is heated. You know, the hot atmosphere of the sun is a one million degree hot. That's pretty hot. But the solar surface is only 6,000 degrees hot. How can you heat up uh, an atmosphere with a cold, quasi cold surface? Now, let me first ask you, how do you know the corona is hot and how do you know the corona really exists? I mean, could you just tell us briefly, what, yeah. how do we know anything about all this? We are very fortunate on Earth that we have the moon who occasionally uh, occults the sun and in that case blocks out the bright sunlight and then uh, the solar atmosphere becomes visible. It's a million times less bright than the sun's disk and that shows us already that there is a huge atmosphere of the sun which must be hot otherwise it wouldn't be so huge. And from spectroscopical means we know already that this is one or two million degrees hot. So is all our understanding based on just lunar eclipses? And for, yeah, fortunately not. We know in a, a few things more in the meantime. But the basic question still is how can that whole cold surface heat the hot uh, corona? How can you with a, with a s cold stove, how can you heat a pot of water? You can't do that, except maybe with microwaves. I don't know how familiar microwaves are in India these days, but they are very popular all over the world. You can heat in a cold environment just by letting waves penetrate the materia inside, your, your food inside, you can heat it just by wave transmission uh, and then absorption in the medium. And we assume that there are some wave phenoma, phenomena from the very turbulent uh, solar surface moving up as waves into the corona and heating it. But this problem is not at all understood. Now, what are the other consequences of this hot corona? Could you just briefly tell us? Yeah, the corona is simply that hot that even the big gravity of the sun cannot contain the atmosphere. It just evaporates like water on that boiling pot, you know. So the sun's atmosphere evaporates constantly away, and that's what we call the solar wind. And what does it affect us on the Earth? Does it have any effect on us? It fills the whole heliosphere, and of course it hits the planets, including the Earth, and it interacts, since it is magnetized, it's an ionized, fully ionized plasma, as we call it, a mixture of ions and electrons, and it carries along the solar magnetic field, and that interacts with the Earth's magnetic field in the sense that it is diverted around. But the varying pressure of the solar wind causes uh, varying phenomena happen uh, on the Earth. So what you're saying is that the solar wind and the corona is not uniform, it varies in time and space. Now, do we understand why it varies? That's one of the next uh, big questions. Why is that corona and the solar wind not that uniform as we might think naively, just looking at the sun, it's just circular and perfect. Uh, it isn't, in fact, if you look more closely. I mean, in, six, in the 1600s, people in Europe even got, got uh, killed for the uh, statement that the sun might have flaws, you know. Uh, sunspots were discovered by Galileo and, and he was in deep trouble by stating that the sun is not flawless, but in fact the sun has f uh, flaws, it has a lot of structure in the atmosphere and in the corona. Uh, from what you say, it's clear that we seem to have understood lot, quite a lot about all this, but are there any outstanding questions or do you think that the subject is a closed subject at the moment? Not, not at all, not at all. The basic questions are still answered. How is the corona being heated? How is the solar wind that ev evaporates from there accelerated? Uh, how are the different types of uh, coronal structures created, uh, like the very active regions uh, uh, above sunspots, uh, like the what we call coronal holes, 
above the poles at solar minimum? How are these different structures created? How can one star produce so different types of coronal structures and solar wind structures? We don't know. But we have been observing the sun for so many years. We have got satellites. We have got various things which have been observing the corona. Now, don't you think we should be doing something clever that, that we can get answers to such questions? In the previous 30 years since the solar wind was discovered by an American space probe, uh, since that time we got many answers. We know how many particles are in the solar wind, what the speed is, what the temperature is, what the chemical composition of that stuff is. We have learned a lot in, within these 30 years, but we still haven't answered the basic questions yet. Is there ha anything happening currently which makes you think that something is going to make a big change in our knowledge on this field? Yes, there's a lot of activity going on based on these 30 years of experience, uh, which is mainly based on satellites and space probes. We are building new uh, space programs in order to explore that. Is there any particular thing which is happening? I mean, I understand there's an X-ray satellite which is producing nice pictures. I mean, is mm -hmm. there anything happening in the near future which you can think of which will dramatically change our understanding? I mean, that's basically my question to you. Yes. I hope we, we will be able to show in this uh, presentation here some of these beautiful images uh, by the yet Japanese X-ray satellite, Yoko. Uh, these data are publicly available and everybody who is on the World Wide Net can look at them daily. Uh, these are just brilliant data which show all the structures, all the beauty of these structures on the sun in a very impressive way. And it show, uh, they also show how dynamically the sun evolves, how these structures explode and others reform, and whether there are dark areas or bright areas and spots in the middle. And it's just impressive. This is one of the ongoing things, and I, I hope it will live for another three years until we understand more of these phenomena. Okay, we have these beautiful pictures coming out. We still don't understand too much. I mean, we get bogged down into details. Now, if I were to ask you, uh, give you unlimited funds, give you unlimited uh, resources, oh. and ask you what is your dream instrument to study all these phenomena? One, one major dream we all, we all have in our business is what we call the solar probe. That would be a spacecraft that is launched by the Earth and would go right into the solar corona within a few radii distance from the sun center and cruise around there and make a pass through that uh, corona and measure in situ what's going on there, measure right on the spot what's going on there. This would be a successor mission of, a, of another mission we have flown earlier that we call that Helios, according to the Greek sun god Helios. Uh, that space mission went to a third of the Earth distance, so mm -hmm. far, far uh, inside the orbit mm -hmm. of the planet Mercury. And approaching the Sun that far showed us already how interesting it becomes the closer you come to the Sun. Because then uh, these structures in the solar wind are no longer that terribly mixed up as they, they appear at the Earth's distance, because there you are right in the middle of the spokes, spoke-like solar wind, which hasn't interacted yet due to the sun's rotation. And the closer you come, the, the clearer you see the undisturbed solar atmosphere as it evaporates. And that told us already many, many things. And the, the uh, very logical thing is, let's go closer. And my dream mission would be the solar probe, which has been studied already by several space agencies. Uh, you, you, we look at, uh, look at atmo the Earth's weather, for instance. We are sitting at the Earth, we can measure anything we like, and still, if you ask the question, can we predict tomorrow's weather, it is not possible because it is complex. And, uh, so it's not just a question of just having measurements. Is it possible that the whole subject of solar uh, corona, solar terrestrial, inter uh, solar interplanetary medium, transients, and so forth, is going to get bogged down into details like what has happened in our atmosphere? I would say, nay, say never, but I think I will not live long, long enough for that. The, the problem is that this is a very complicated chain between the Sun and the Earth of many actions taking place, causing reactions, 
and they cause reactions themselves in a very complicated chain, a long chain with 15 different uh, keys in it. And uh, many of these limbs in the, in the chain are actually just not understood, starting from coronal heating, solar wind expansion, and then the propagation through space. Also, there are lots of phenomena happen there. And then the interaction with the Earth itself, the magnetosphere, and all that. So there's lots of things to be done. But we are clearing that up, detail by detail. Lots of progress is being made. And I'm pretty confident that we will make it well into the magnetosphere. But then there arises a different problem. We find, we know already, that the Earth system is a very unstable system. Mm -hmm. and a very minor energy input, a very minor, minor change of the solar wind conditions might cause a big uh, st storm break loose. Just an al analogy, imagine a lion which can be triggered by, you know, a little it's pinprick. Red or a, yeah, okay. See? Mm -hmm. And this, how can you predict what the lion will be, will be doing? We are in a similar situation. How can we finally safely predict what the Earth system will do upon the solar sun, pr sun pr uh, pin pricks. But what you would really like is to be able to uh, study the inner layers of the sun, what you can get in the optical H-alpha pictures and things like that, and be able to you know, see something which will ultimately say, and say, yeah, okay, a week from now you're going to have a problem. I mean, that would be the ideal situation, mm -hmm. right? Now, before you can get to that, obviously you must understand all the ch steps in the chain, as you mm -hmm. said. Yes. But my question is, even if you did understand the steps of the chain, would you think that's a viable or a feasible proposition? I mean, the same question as you said. I mean, it is, a, it is so complex that one small deviation anywhere on the chain could throw your predictions completely out of... Yeah. Because it is a very complex I system, as I understand it. To be honest, uh, I don't think so much of this problem. We are doing basic research. We just want to understand what's happening in the solar system. And later on, maybe, it may be possible to put the pieces together and uh, calculate what happen what's happening at the end of the chain. Presently, we are preparing for a big space mission which will uh, tell us a few things about, one, uh, about several of these missing links. That's the, what we call SOHO, the Solar and Heliospheric Observatory. That's a huge uh, satellite by ESA and NASA. ESA is the European Space Agency, and NASA is the uh, American Equivalent Space Agency, of, of course. And they are working on equal terms to get this mission going. And it will be launched uh, at the end of 95, I hope, if everything gets ready in time. Uh, and that has a unique set of new telescopes and other instruments on board that will allow us probably to disentangle a few of those missing links. But I do mm. not dare any predictions. Uh, what is your role in uh, the SOFO mission? I understand you are one of the principal investigators. Of, you've got some instrument on this. Maybe you could, can you describe us briefly what exactly yeah. your instrument does? Yeah, two things. I'm basically uh, one of the inventors of that mission. Mm -hmm. And that tells you already something how long such a, the preparation of such a mission takes. I was in the study group uh, since 83, 1983, when the proposal was made first to, s to build such a new set of solar telescopes. Who makes this proposal, for instance? Scientists, like oh, me. One and individual others. or a group of scientists? Or? Groups of scientists upon request from the space agencies. They say, come on, let's do another new big mission. NASA says this occasionally, or ESA says this. Scientists of the world, please propose what you want to have. Uh, and we, dis uh, we proposed SOHO at the time. Uh, and I was in study teams for some uh, three, four, five years to define the mission, to set up the size of the mission, to define a set of instruments which would cover everything as we understood it at that time. And then there, there were negotiations between NASA and ESA. Then there were experimenter teams uh, looked for. They were actually competing for the, for, uh, the best proposal. It's a pretty uh, awkward procedure at, at times. 
And I finally, myself, got involved in one of the optical telescopes according to the motto, as I said it before, go closer to the sun. And as long as we don't have the solar probe, uh, we have to use optical methods to look at the sun, uh, sun's atmosphere. And we do that actually with this instrument I'm involved in uh, by a coronagraph. A coronagraph uh, is a very simple instrument. Just hold your hand in front of the sun and block it as the moon does during eclipse. So you have a permanent lunar eclipse. R see, an artificial uh, solar eclipse. A solar eclipse. Yes. And then you would see the atmosphere around. Uh, that doesn't work from the ground, because uh, from, th from the ground, you have the blue sky around, the uh, scattered light from the sky, and that blocks it, because the corona is just mm -hmm. a millionth that bright as the solar disk. So if you go on very high mountain tops, you may be lucky to see occasionally the innermost, brightest part. And that's why we go to space. Uh, we build a new type of a mirror telescope, which allows us to produce images of the solar corona of that same quality as we had that with eclipses. And then we will see all the structure of the sun evolve. And I hope we will be able to produce well, maybe similar movies as the Yoko people do now and show us the outer corona, how it rotates, and how maybe transients evolve from the solar surface and plow through the atmosphere and make it into the solar wind. And I'm part of a, of a major effort in building such an instrument, uh, especially this is the major, one of the major German contributions to that mission. What are the other missions on this particular, uh, pro uh, what are the other instruments on this particular mission? There are several instruments on board which look into solar spectroscopy. It's a bit difficult mm -hmm. to explain spectroscopy, but in, to say it in simple words, from the different colors uh, of the solar light, uh, you can estimate which temperature the material is where it was emitted, which temperature, which, de which density, which chemical composition. So if you, if you look at different spectral regimes, you can look deep into the solar atmosphere and analyze uh, uh, what you have there. And th these are not imaging telescopes. The, they can just analyze little spots on the sun's disk. Uh, and then they have to move around on the, sun spot on the sun to probe different areas. Because we know already that uh, the better we want to understand the solar phenomena, the, the higher spatial resolution we need Detail because the real is. phenomena are very minuscule. So when do you expect to see the first astronomy come from this particular mission? The first data you mean? Yes. That will, won't happen before the end of this year. It will take uh, several months to bring that spacecraft from the Earth uh, upstream to the point wh which we call Lagrangian point which is a stable point between the Sun and the Earth. And that point is 1.5 million kilometers ahead of the Earth, which is just 1% of the Earth-Sun distance. And from there, we can permanently, 24 hours a day, look at the Sun and produce images every few minutes or whatever we have in telemetry available. Well, I would uh, really wish that all your experiment goes very well, and I hope that uh, We'll see you again sometime next year or sometime in the future where you'll tell us what are all the great new science which is going to come out of your experiment. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dr. Schwen. It was a pleasure. Thank you.